earlier today, Cliff Lee was on the backfield to the rest of the pitchers going through normal PFPs. But as of yesterday, because of elbow discomfort, spring training became abnormal for the Phillies left-hander. Meanwhile, on the main field, Phillies second baseman Chase Utley continued his casual rehab of an offseason sprained ankle. His progress continues to get better. That's the good news for the Phils. And in the next couple of days, Chase will be able to migrate from just practicing and having conversations with his manager to hopefully get his name penciled into the lineup for the Phils here in spring training. It's a beautiful day for baseball down here in Clearwater, Florida. It's a hazy, hot afternoon as the Detroit Tigers are in town for the first time here at Bright House Field as the Phils winners yesterday, winners the day before, look to put that streak on the line here this afternoon. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, along with Ben Davis. Greg Murphy will join us in just a little bit. Matt's off for the next couple of days, but we'll probably see him wandering around the ballpark at some point. Well, news out of Phillies camp. Cliff Lee, a little discomfort in the same elbow that bothered him last year and made him miss most of the season. So it leaves us with some question marks, even though there were already questions about the Phillies rotation going into today's start for Miguel Alfredo Gonzalez. Yeah, you know, it's going into today's start. He has a lot to prove. Obviously, the Phillies gave him a lot of money, but this is a guy I really think he wants to prove not only to the team, but to himself that he can go out and pitch in the major leagues. He started at every level last year, A ball, double A, triple A. The biggest question with him is, can he get guys out with his off-speed pitches? He's got a very, very good fastball. He's got a good sinker with late life. We'll see what happens. When you see the pro potential for the rotation this year, it still includes Cliff Lee because we don't have any additional information on what his MRI says. And we'll hear from Dr. James Andrews sometime in the next couple of days. But down at the bottom, Miguel Alfredo Gonzalez, Kevin Slowey, Chad Billingsley, Paul Clemens, they're all battling for a spot somewhere in the Phillies organization. They are, and you don't know what's going to happen with Cliff Lee. We'll see what, what, what goes on. But I really think Chad Billingsley, he's a dark horse in this race. I think it's someone that Ruben has talked very highly about. He has his stuff back, and he's healthy. He can pitch. And so far, so good for the Phillies starting pitchers. They're earned run average under two so far here in spring training. So today it will be Miguel Alfredo Gonzalez. He'll be opposed by a former Philly prospect, had a good year last year with the Reds, Alfredo Simon for the Detroit Tigers. Well, there's a lot going on here in Clearwater, Florida, not only the Phil's games, but it's also old home week to a certain extent with the Tigers coming to town. Charlie Manuel, Mike Schmidt, everybody getting a chance to soak in the sun. Phillies Baseball is brought to you by Citizens Bank. Introducing one deposit checking. Keeping things simple is helping you bank better. By Toyota. Toyota's one for everyone sales event is going on now. Toyota, let's go places. By Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. And by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Learn more at IBX.com. He's not laid up.
absolutely painful right now. It's just it's what it felt like at the start of when I started feeling it last year. So knowing what I know now, uh, if my body does the same deal, then it's probably going to come back. But uh, there's still a chance that it's uh, scar tissue and normal. It'd be six to eight months out. So basically, if I had the surgery, this season would be done. And uh, Possibly my career, I guess. I mean, I don't know. So, um, we'll have to see. I think th that's the case for everybody in Philly's camp. They'll have to wait and see what's going on with Cliff Lee. We mentioned before he did uh, participate in the PFP drills earlier today in the backfield. He didn't do any kind of throwing uh, until later on. And that sound is courtesy of Scott Palmer, Eddie Lynn from Phillies.com. And keep yourself up to date on what's going on on uh, with the Phils in spring training each and every day by going to phillies.com they've got plenty of video and plenty of storylines that you can follow let's take a look at the starting lineup today for the Detroit Tigers and Brad Osmus brought to you by Xfinity your home for the most live sports Ian Kinsler leads it off at second base Jose Iglesias the shortstop bat second then Tyler Collins and JD Martinez Nick Castellanos the third baseman bats fifth Stephen Moya the DH will hit sixth and the bottom third of fields Holiday is the backup catcher and Aaron Westlake and they will face Philly's right hander Miguel Alfredo Gonzalez who just tried to throw a curveball Ben that went all the way back to the screen and didn't come anywhere near Carlos Ruiz but he says you mentioned has something to prove he does have something to prove he is a max effort guy uh, he's 89 to 97 with his fastball he does have good late life on a sinker split change cutter and he did pitch at all the levels in the minor leagues last season and his velocity got better and better as the year went on which is a good sign for the Phillies at one point he was topping off at 97 miles an hour so he'll pitch here today to start things off he'll face Ian Kinsler the Tigers are down from Lakeland that's where they make their spring training home and the first pitch of the day fastball in there for a strike we're underway and the count is 0 and 1. Kinsler so far this spring you see he's four for nine he does have a home run out towards shortstop and Freddie Galvis is around it. And with one away, Jose Iglesias will be the batter. Two pitches, one out. Take that all day long. I think that's one of the things we heard last year for Miguel Alfredo Gonzalez was kind of an issue with just command. Now, you talked about secondary pitches, which was the other thing they wanted him to work on, but just command overall and getting ahead of the hitters. Yeah, it's one thing to throw strikes, but another thing to throw effective strikes. I mean, guys can go and throw it down the middle every time, but you have to be really commanding that strike zone. And you do see the, the max effort there at 96 mile an hour fastball. 28 years old. In there for a strike, one ball, one strike. So, so far, the gun is red 92, 94, 96 with his fastballs. Iglesias has asked for time. Carlos Ruiz does the catching today. This is the once a week opportunity for Ruiz to get behind the plate. It looked like it slipped outside. It's two balls and one strike. To right field, Dominic Brown got a good jump on it. That didn't sound like uh, Iglesias got it on the good part of the bat. And there are two quick outs here in the first. Yeah, his hands might be stinging right there. <laughs> I know the feeling all too well. That'll bring Tyler Collins to the plate. Collins had 18 home runs last year in AAA. Boy, that park in Toledo, the AAA park, good place to hit. Was it the batter's eye or something that makes it no, good? It's, it's just short. It's very comfortable. You feel very comfortable as a hitter. And the dimensions, they play in your, in your favor. One ball, no strikes to him. Uh, off the hands, out of play. One ball and one strike. Home plate umpire is Marty Foster. They were a little tardy today. Bob Davidson's at first. Tom Hallion's at second. Phil Cuzzy's around at third. Off the hands, that'll bloop into center field, a base hit for Tyler Collins. 
So a two out single you can hear in the background. There are a lot of Tiger fans uh, that have made their way to Clearwater which is normally the case. We said it's a comfortable day 82 degrees a little breeze. We can feel it up here in the, the box a little bit. It is beautiful. I wouldn't want to be in the sun though. At least for a long period of time. Yeah. <laughs> Here's J.D. Martinez. How about the year J.D. Martinez had a season ago cut by the Houston Astros in spring training. And then he went on to hit 315 with 23 home runs and 76 RBIs for the Tigers. It's called making the most of your opportunity. Incredible. It's not like the Astros aren't searching for players. Popped him up right around the second base bag. Herrera, the second baseman, Galvis, the shortstop, and Freddie makes the catch. 11 pitches for Miguel Alfredo Gonzalez. Excellent start for the Phillies righty. When you is where you can probably get the most autographs if you come down to spring training right along the left field line because the Phillies players have to exit that way and enter that way coming into the dugout. There's a veteran right there. He knows where to go. Let's take a look at the Phillies lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity. Your home for the most live sports. Revere, Herrera, and Brown followed by Ryan Howard, Darren Ruff, and Grady Sizemore. The bottom third of Carlos Ruiz catching. Freddie Galvis at shortstop and Cord Phelps over at third base. He'll bat ninth. They'll face right-hander Alfredo Simon, former Phillies prospect, who Ben last year won 15 games for the Cincinnati Reds. Had an outstanding year, especially in that ballpark. Obviously, it's tough to pitch, but a 2014 All-Star. Uh, he's 90-98 with great sink, late life, slider curve change. The Tigers signed him to a one-year deal for uh, for a pretty good price. And he'll be part of their rotation. Their rotation took a couple of hits with Max Scherzer going to the Nationals. And Rick Porcello went to the Red Sox. They do have David Price and Justin Verlander. Anibal Sanchez. Here's Ben Revere to lead things off. And Ben takes strike one. He's one for 12 this spring. It is a bit misleading. He has some very good at bats. Seen a lot of pitches. Some of the outs he's made have been hard. Broke his bat. Floater off the glove of Simon. Well, there's payback. He hits it just over the mound, and he gets his second hit of the spring. <laughs> you can call that a hit, Tom. <laughs> Look, it already went up. It said a hit. <laughs> it's, an it's an athletic move right there. <laughs> I think halfway up the line, that's when Ben realized I can beat that one out because Iglesias did everything he could to try to get it over there. All right, so Revere's aboard, and here's Odubel Herrera. Herrera's having a good spring, five for 15 so far. He also has four stolen bases. First pitch, he bunts toward third. Simon off the mound, bare hands. He better hurry, and he just gets it over in time. 
to get Herrera. So a sacrifice for Herrera. Puts Revere in a scoring position, and let's send it over to Murph with Ruben Amaro. All right, thanks a lot, Tom. Yes, here with the Phillies general manager, Ruben Amaro Jr., and uh, the latest on Cliff Lee. You just briefed the, the media, and uh, he's going to start throwing again, but uh, it's a wait-and-see process. Yeah, we did talk to Dr. Andrews. Uh, Dr. Andrews talked to our medical people, uh, Scott uh, Sheridan in particular, and, and uh, basically, this, and just as we had uh, and diagnosed earlier, um, the, the injury is still there. Uh, no, no, no changes at all. Um, but Cliff is still feeling it in that, in that elbow. He did throw today, and it actually went pretty well. Um, very, very mild sensation. Uh, he's going to continue to throw. Um, I have to say that we are, you know, not terribly optimistic that it's going to progress and be better. But uh, we have to give that, you know, we're going to give him that opportunity, you know, to throw. He's going to work on a throwing progression, do his regular stuff. Um, as long as he doesn't feel uh, discomfort uh, to the point where he needs to shut himself down, he'll just continue to throw and see where it goes. So best case scenario is that he pitches with this in spring training maybe into the regular season, as long as he can tolerate it. That's the best case scenario, and the worst case scenario, I guess, is that, uh, you know, is that he might have to have surgery or, or, uh, or shut it down or slow him down, and uh, we'll come, kind of go from there. Okay, it's a wait-and-see process. Ruben, we appreciate your time. Guys, we'll send it back upstairs to the booth. All right, Murph, thank you. As Ben Revere is thrown out trying to steal third for the second out here in the first inning. He said he was going to try to steal third base a little bit more, but this was a great throw by Brian Holiday. The catcher for the Tigers. Two balls and no strikes to Dominic Brown. Well, it's okay. To, it's okay to be aggressive, but that's not the time to be aggressive. Ben Revere has great speed. You have your cleanup, your three-hole hitter for today's lineup batting. You may have gotten in there, but he looked like a. But still, it's, you know, he's going to he's going to score from second, most likely on a single anyway. Dominic Brown thuds one out towards second base. No runs, one hit, and nobody left for the Phils. We'll go to the seconds. Today at 4, stay tuned to Comcast Sportsnet for a complete recap of the moves the Eagles have made over the last week or so and over the last 48 hours in particular and what moves Chip Kelly may make in the future. Watch a special edition of Sportsnet Central today at 4. We'll go to the top of the second. Phillies and the Tigers scoreless. Nick Castellanos, Stephen Moya, and Daniel Fields will be the batters for the Tigers. Each team has picked up a hit in their first inning of work. First pitch is a fastball. It's 0-1. A lot of fastballs so far, Ben. I think they've all been fastballs. It is hard and it is heavy. You can hear that. You were talking about the pop of the mitt. Well, there's the first thing other than a fastball, and it's inside. It's one and one. 
Castellanos last year played in 148 games for the Tigers had 11 home runs 66 runs batted in as the everyday third baseman. Miguel Cabrera moved over to first base last year. Out toward left field Grady Sizemore ventures back toward the track the wind got a hold of that a little bit. And then there's one out here in the second. Well, we heard from Ruben tomorrow, but Murph, you were part of the press conference. Uh, anything else you can add about the Cliff Lee situation? Well, you know, Tom, it's uh, it, when, you, when you think about what happened, you know, they've shut him down two different times for this uh, particular injury. It's that tear in the uh, the common flexor tendon that uh, he had a year ago, and they shut him down. They gave him some time. He came back and only uh, managed a couple of more starts before he was able to, to you know, before he had to shut it down again. So you heard Ruben say, not terribly optimistic uh, that, that Cliff is going to be able to you know keep on going with this but what they'll do now is try to get him back on his regular program he'll have a bullpen at some point this week as long as he feels okay with that he could indeed get it you know get a start here in the next week or so and, and then at that point they're just kind of keeping their fingers crossed that maybe he can pitch uh, to tolerance and pitch through the pain it's interesting you know when you think about the elbow and you think about the various diagnoses that have that have gone on over the years you know the Phillies are relying on Cliff to be kind of a workhorse and you wonder what that injury will do to that thought process of him being a workhorse. Well the other thing that you run into can he get his work on the side in right if he's right. in that much discomfort how much is he going to be able to throw bullpens how much is he going to be able to work and play his long toss and get that arm back to where it needs to be it's going to be a basically a question of tolerance yeah. yeah and here's the good news uh, that uh, was mentioned during the press conference is that right now it's not incredibly painful for Cliff he, he's feeling something in there something that he's just not sure is is right but it's not causing him a lot of pain which is a good sign uh, you know so they're just hoping that uh, maybe with a little bit more time it strengthens around there and, and he's able to continue forward so it, it is a wait and see as Ruben said to uh, to find out whether or not he's going to be able to go into the regular season and be part of this rotation my only problem with that Murph is it may be a little bit more time how many months did he just yeah. have off yeah I know that's the that's the question I have and I and I think, you know, again, going back to the, the words that Ruben used, ter not terribly optimistic. I, I think that's why they're feeling that way. It makes sense that, uh, you know, they seem to have given him a lot of time. He gave himself a lot of time, did everything he needed to do uh, to try and get back, and then he has to be shut down after his first start. So certainly not good news, but, uh, again, we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, we saw him earlier today with the rest of the pitchers on the backfield doing PFPs, and he didn't throw in this, the, this footage that we're showing you. But he did throw yeah. at he, some point he today. Did, he long tossed today, Tom, um, which is a good sign and, and felt pretty good is, is what we were told. So, yeah, again, you know, it might be one of those things that uh, they're just going to have to kind of go day by day over the next couple of weeks and, and find out where he's at. Yeah, I know that there was a collective oh no when the reports came out uh, just a couple days ago about the, the elbow. All right, Murph, we appreciate that. We'll hear from you more as we go throughout today. Daniel Fields is the batter for the Tigers. They had their second hit. A one out single for Steven Moya. Fields last year played on three different levels in the minors for the Tigers. He's had a good spring so far. He has six hits, a couple doubles, two RBIs. And it's one ball and one strike to him. This is a live fastball we're seeing right here. Very live. To left field the wind may get a hold of this one Sizemore going back and it is gone man did it get a hold of this one that's an opposite field two run home run for Daniel Fields and the Tigers lead it to nothing and that ball carried out of this ballpark center cut yeah he squared it up pretty good and off the top wall in the, the back of the bullpen. Very good strong swing there by Fields. The wind is howling out to left, but I think that's going to get out regardless. Yeah, looking at the replay, uh, it didn't sound like he squared it up, but looking at the replay, it, it certainly looked like he squared it up. So 2 nothing Tigers. 
And Brian Holiday takes outside. Two balls and no strikes. And that's get getting into what we talked about before. Can he throw his off-speed pitches for strikes? Was able to get Castellanos early on. Doubled up with a breaking ball, got him to fly to left field. Now you need to mix those in repeatedly throughout these other at-bats. Otherwise, guys, I don't care how hard you throw. They're going to be looking for that heater. On the inside corner, two and two. Gonzalez does have an assortment of pitches beyond the fastball. I think basically today we've just seen the curveball, right? Correct. And there's a slider. He went around according to the home plate umpire. And there's the first strikeout of the afternoon for Miguel Alfredo Gonzalez. So two outs here in the second. Great pitch there. Very nice. Well, that did have some good bite on it and it was late. So therefore you're not picking up the spin. If you get a check swing like that you're thinking heater heater heater. Next thing you know it's out of the zone. Obviously he's not seeing the break on that pitch. Here's Aaron Westlake. Off the outside corner one ball no strikes. Now if you have the stuff that Gonzalez has would you prefer him to throw a curve or a slider to complement that stuff. I like that slider he just threw the, the, the curve ball just seems to kind of be rolling out of his hand. You know I think that one there was a cut fastball. Hmm. The heck of a swing he put on that. <laughs> sure did. <laughs> So I get a miss, throws another slider, it's one and two. You mentioned the Philly starters, and I know it's only a small small piece of the puzzle so far, but the starters came in with an earned run average of just barely over one in the seven games. Two and two as that pitch floats outside. That's pretty remarkable. To have an earned run average of that low. Yeah, officially it's at 1.13. It was two earned runs and 18 innings of work for the starters coming into today. Swing. Good adjustment. Missed. And he sure did. He came back and threw the breaking stuff. Two strikeouts follow a two run home run by Daniel Fields. This one the opposite way. Want to go a long way, and the Tigers take the lead. Get warmed up for the Phillies season with the latest news on the Phillies and updates on the moves from around the league. Watch Phillies Hot Stove presented by Acme Wednesday night at 11 on Comcast Sportsnet. 
Bottom of the second, 2 nothing Tigers on top. Ryan Howard will lead things off. It'll be Howard, Darren Ruff, and Grady Sizemore. 4, 5, and 6 for the Phillies. Phillies do get a base hit in the first inning. Ben Revere was caught stealing third for the second out against Alfredo Simon. Inside, one ball, no strikes. Ryan Howard had a couple knocks yesterday. The Phillies won nothing victory. Yeah, four for 13 so far for Ryan. And only one RBI that came on opening day. But in his defense, there haven't been a lot of opportunities to drive runners in. No, there haven't. And going back to last inning, I don't want to keep harping on it, but that's why you don't get thrown out at third right there. Lefties up, obviously easier for the catcher to. Ben Revere's already in scoring position. And then you got your three and four, four hole hitters coming up. Let them do what they get paid to do. Well, I think your point is a good one that he was already in scoring position and would have scored easily uh, on a ball to the outfield. Correct. Now his goal is to try to improve the numbers in stealing third this year, but as you mentioned it, there are times where you can do that. Two and two the count to Howard. And he pulls that one into the dugout, Tigers dugout. Apparently uh, Alfredo Simon He's throwing an EFIS pitch as well, Ben. I don't know when he's going to throw it. It wasn't there, but he does get a strikeout his first of the day. And there's one out here in the second. Darren Ruff's coming up. 56 mile an hour EFIS pitch. 56. Yeah. Good change up right there. Excellent pitch. He calls the EFIS pitch. He calls it an EFIS split. So I guess that that's how he's gripping it, but we haven't seen it yet today. Here's Darren Ruff. We're up to four for 16 so far this spring. Fouls the first pitch off the mask of Holiday, and it's 0 and 1. Toward the hole and diving stop. Castellanos his throw to third is was there in time, but it goes off the glove of the first baseman. So Darren Ruff is safe. We'll see how they score that one. It'll be a knock. Well, if they scored the one earlier. A knock. That's a knock. Tom. Tom. This is a knock. <laughs> It was a reward for hitting the ball hard. Aaron Westlake just couldn't, couldn't come up with that hop, so it is the second hit of the day for the Phils. A very good 0-2 pitch there by Simon. I'm sure that's one he'd like to have back. Grady Sizemore, one for nine. And he takes inside, one ball, no strikes. A couple guys that really impressed me in batting practice. I just like to see how hard the ball comes off the bat. But Herrera and Sizemore, those guys hit the ball hard. And that's what you what you like to see in BP. They have any different style? I mean, are they just up there hacking? No, it just it, the ball just comes off their bat differently. It really does. Herrera today in BP was hitting missiles. I know it's BP. Doesn't always. You know, translate to good at bats in the game, but you do like to see it anyway. 
One ball, one strike to Sizemore. That ball gets away from Holiday, and Ruff will move up to second base. So two and one. And I don't think Darren's going to try to steal third here. No. Holiday back on his heels right there as a catch. You can be up on your toes. Expect a bad pitch, especially with someone on base. RBI situation. The Phils are averaging 2.8 runs per game this spring, and there's ball four. So Sizemore's aboard. First walk of the day. And that puts runners on first and second for Carlos Ruiz. Brad Osmus and Gene Lamont, his bench coach, taking in today's ball game. Carlos is 0 for 9 so far this spring. Swings at the first pitch. He's been doing that a lot this spring, and Westlake runs out of room, fortunately, for the Phillies. Now, RBI situation, if you see a fastball, I mean, you're, you're thinking about going after one early in these spots. Absolutely. You get something you like. This is, you know, RBI guys are, especially on a club that, quote-unquote, is not supposed to have a lot of offense. You get a good RBI guy that you can count on. Be great to have Chooch. And I don't know who's going to be behind Rhino this year. You know, whether that be Darren Ruff or Chooch. But to add some kind of protection for Ryan Howard, enable him to get some more strikes to, to hit. Side one and one to Carlos Ruiz. Alfredo Simon, like Miguel Alfredo Gonzalez, we're anticipating three innings, maybe four, depending on pitch count, although he's at 23 pitches right now, with one out here in the second. Bullpens are quiet for both. I think he thought that pitch was on the outside part of the plate. Carlos, though, laying off, and it's three and one. Probably sounds funny, but that was a good take by Carlos right there. His front foot, his stride foot was soft. His hands went back and they stayed back. Now that tells me that he's seeing the pitch. Now it's three and one. I had said that it was three balls and one strike. It's now three and one to Carlos. So he's should get a pretty good pitch to hit here. Simon does not want to walk the bases loaded here with Freddie Galvis on deck. If you choose, you're looking for something, something you can drive. That doesn't have to be a home run, but something you can hit into a gap. Into the crowd on a hop. It'll be Freddie Galvis and then Cord Phelps for the Phillies. He's the number nine batter here this afternoon. 3 1 sinker there to Chooch. Now, if you're thinking about it, probably look for the same pitch. Simon obviously wants a double play. Best pitch to get that on is a sinker. And he does have a good sinker. That's part Very of the reason good. why he won 15 games last year. Runners go. Check swing foul ball. And they stay alive three and two. I, I, I was surprised the runners went there three and two one out. Partly because of who the base runners were in that spot. Yeah. 
But Ryan Sandberg did say they were going to do more of that and probably have to from an offensive standpoint this year. Simon throws strikes despite walking size more, but it's going to be around the plate. Chooch, good job of putting ball in play. All these things factor into that, whether you're going to send the run or not. This time they don't go. Carlos checked his swing. Nope, says Bob Davidson. He went around. And there are two outs here in the second. Certainly intent there. And that'll leave it for Freddie Galvis with two men down here in the second. Freddie, five for 16 so far this spring. Pretty good numbers. He's batting eighth here this afternoon. All right, and that wasn't the Ethos pitch that he talked about, but that was only 69 miles an hour. Still 10 miles an hour faster than when he said he would throw it. Freddie's thinking that wasn't on the scouting report. <laughs> All you had to do is read the Detroit Free Press today. <laughs> you like Freddie in the eight hole, or do you like him uh, batting second? Does it all depend on how he's hitting the ball? 100%. He can handle the bat. He can get bunts down. But you just can't have a guy at the top of the lineup that's an out. And I'm not saying he is one. But that's the worry. But he's got to get some hits. Yeah. If he wants to stay in that two hole, and I think that's where Rhino wants to keep him because he's a switch hitter. He's got it. He's got to produce in that two hole. Well, and he's a switch hitter, and as you said, he can bunt. And that's sometimes important if you're trying to manufacture runs early on. Or with a guy got, like Ben Revere on. Yeah, and he's got some power. He can he can hit some gaps, and Ben Revere can score from first on a double. That one's over our heads and out of play. Two and two. Good swing there by Freddie. It was quick. It was to the ball. It was very direct. Ball shallow center field. Iglesias will give way to Kinsler, the second baseman. And he puts it away. The Phils threaten but do not score. They leave a couple here in the second. Also a couple strikeouts for Simon.
five Michael Barkhead talks about the Eagles options in NFL free agency plus a look ahead at tonight's showdown between the Flyers and the Stars and highlights from the Phil spring training game today and much more watch Philly Sports Talk presented by Comcast Business on Comcast Sportsnet. You were Murph going on with uh, Michael today. I mean I know both of you have been guests over the last week or so. Are you on today with Michael. Not that I'm aware of Murph are you on today with uh, Michael Barkhead. Are you scheduled to be on Philly Sports Talk today. I am not on oh, okay. uh, today. Here's Ian. Yeah, you know they got, a, they got a lot of Eagle stuff going on up there too. So a lot of stuff going on yeah. with free agency. <laughs> One ball and no strikes. Kinsler grounded out to shortstop his first time up. Two and zero. Oh. Kinsler, a guy that stands really far up in the box. You usually like to sit back, give yourself a little bit more time. He is way up in that box. When you see a guy up in the box as a catcher like that, does it change anything for you? Does it tell you anything about him? No. Maybe it's susceptible to a breaking pitch. Once you catch that out in front before the last few feet of it breaking. That one's hit well out to left center field. Revere on the run into the alley. It is off the top of the wall. Sizemore's there to back it up, but Kinsler's on his way to third. And he'll get there easily. A stand up triple. Well, the wind certainly got a hold of that, and it stretched it a little farther than I think Revere anticipated. The only thing he could have done was backed off the wall a little bit more once he realized he couldn't catch it just to keep him at second base. Just knowing the caroms of a ballpark. Iglesias takes a strike. It's 0 1. He would probably have been better suited just to let that. Just, you know what? Take your double, Ian. Take your double. We'll take our chances from there. Unless he was Spider Man, I don't think he was getting that. Well, he had a couple of those plays last year where, where he thought he was Spider Man, was trying to climb the wall in left center field. Anyone in particular come to mind, Tom? Had a play, it's 0 and 2. Uh, it was the inside the park home run that Andrew McCutcheon hit. Correct. Yeah. I mean, he. He had no chance to catch it or do anything with it, and he just started to climb the wall and. All of a sudden, the ball was out in right center field yep. <laughs> off the carom. Back toward the middle, Ooh, off the leg of Miguel Alfredo Gonzalez. A run will score. Iglesias is on his way to second. That's where he'll be, and we're going to have to come out and take a look at Miguel Alfredo Gonzalez because that ball was smoked. This is real speed coming at you. At one point he had his hands out there and it hits the leg instead of the hand and he immediately uh, reached down. Now he's going to try to throw some warm up pitches. It's going to be a nice egg on that one. As a pitcher, you want to get into a very good fielding position. You throw the pitch. After you throw the pitch, you're a fielder. It looked like he got into a good good position. He just forgot to. I mean, that ball was smoked. That ball was hit hard. I mean, he's pretty close to being at his pitch limit anyway. Freddie Galvis coming in to translate. They've got O'Sullivan warming up. They had O'Sullivan warming up in the bullpen. Seth Rosine joins him as well. That's the right move here. Yeah, I think uh, that's what Ryan Sandberg wanted to do after talking to Bob McClure, and they just wanted to explain it, it seemed to be, to Miguel Alfredo Gonzalez. So his afternoon is complete. 39 pitches under his belt. And the Phillies will go to the bullpen. It looks like Seth Rosine will be the new pitcher. 
with nobody out here in the third and the Tigers on top three nothing. McDonald's opening night t-shirt for fans 15 and older when you come to the ballpark on Wednesday, April 8th, and the Phillies and the Boston Red Sox get together. Tickets can be purchased by going to phillies.com. Well, Miguel Alfredo Gonzalez goes two plus innings. He's charged with uh, three runs so far. He leaves after Jose Iglesias hits him with a line drive right off the leg. And Phillies will turn to right-hander Seth Rosine, who last year made it to the major leagues with the Texas Rangers and the Phillies saw him opening day he pitched in three games for the Rangers who took him out from the Phillies organization in the rule five draft and then was sent back to Philadelphia in the minor leagues he was three and five Miguel Alfredo Gonzalez is leaving uh, the field as we speak well one thing that we noticed Ben is that his fastball had an awful lot of life on it now they did hit him a few times with his fastball had some great life it did uh, elevated a couple pitches but I, I I like the slider a lot. I really did. I like the slider. They didn't say it, but this pitch, you know, it's a it's a breaking ball. And Iglesias smokes it. And you can see how hard that ball caromed into the dugout. But that's the right move getting him out of there, I think. And he finishes with 32 pitches. And because of the injury, Seth Rosine has as much time as he needs. Uh, to warm up so the clock which did start when he entered the playing field uh, is not a factor at this point. He had thrown uh, just a few pitches before they had made the pitching change. Well this Tigers team three runs so far on five base hits and we took a take a look at our Toyota leaderboard and the Tigers last year first in average second in runs per game. Excellent on base percentage and excellent slugging percentage. Even though they've made some changes this year, I think Brad Ausmus's team is probably going to be in the same boat offensively in 2015. Yeah, they have some guys that can really, really swing it. Obviously, Miguel Cabrera, the best hitter in the game, period. I guess it, a lot of it depends on his health more than anything else. Yeah, it's effortless, it's line to line, and it's so consistent. One of the other question marks will be their pitching staff and particularly their starting staff and how they'll be able to respond to the loss of Scherzer and also the lock of loss of Rick Porcello. Brad Ospice has made the transition pretty nicely taking over for Jim Leland. And I think uh, he'll be the first to tell you that the guy next to him Gene Lamont has helped out an awful lot too. Absolutely. Brad Ospice is smart man. Dartmouth. But he played and caught for a lot of years. My wife's a big fan of Brad Austin. <laughs> big fan. Well, Tyler Collins will be the batter with a runner at second base after Seth Rosine gets himself set. And he shows Bunt, fouls it at the plate, and it's 0 1. 
three hole hitter bunny with a man on second. Three hole hitter had 18 home runs last year. <laughs> he's trying to show that he's versatile. The Tigers are probably saying to him, yeah, show us your versatility and show us how you can hit it out on all fields. You just give away a strike. I, I don't get it. Outside one and one. Two and two. 91 on that fastball from Rosine. Then you talk about the Tigers' offense. And that's a big ballpark they play in, in Detroit. Obviously, it's going to be cold early on. Ball doesn't carry as well, but Victor Martinez, Miguel Cabrera, Kinsler, these guys are professional hitters. And they put up some numbers. Off the end of the bat out toward right Dominic Brown settles under it. Iglesias thought about tagging Dominic has an excellent arm. <laughs> and there's one away. Iglesias has to hop over top of that throw. I love that. He just didn't catch it. Take it for granted that Iglesias was not going to tag up. Get firing that baseball. That happened to Dom a couple times last year, and I think maybe he learned from that. Me anticipating a little bit more. It's a great play right there. Yes, he didn't tag up, but he come up. He came up firing. Yeah, you're right. It did happen a few times last year when he came up sort of lackadaisical, and guys took advantage of it. JD Martinez popped out to short his first time up. Breaking ball in there, 0 and 1. I figure Rosine is going to throw just this inning here before the Phillies will go back to the bullpen for O'Sullivan. Ball center field, Ben Revere. And there are two outs. And Castellanos will be the batter. Third baseman, Nick Castellanos. Rosine is very deliberate out on the mound. He sure is. Savoring this opportunity to pitch. <laughs> But if he strands a guy at second with nobody out, three, four, five up, take that. Started the last two hitters off with breaking pitches, and he worked ahead. It's no balls in one strike to Castellanos. He flied out to Grady Sizemore and left. To back breaking pitches. Nice. 
That is what you call a flame-tempered bat. See, the end of that bat is they smoke it. Get the grains a little bit, a little bit harder. So you feel like the ball, the ball jump off it a little bit more. It won't break as often. Yeah, I mean, some guys do it. They just like the look of it. But that one is very, uh, very flame tempered. The outside yes, sir. corner, 93 mile an hour fastball. Nice job by Rosine. He comes in with a runner at second, a run already across the plate, and gets the three batters that he faced here in the third. When Mark Phillies baseball is brought to you by Jefferson, where health is all we do. Call 1-800-JEFF-NOW or visit jefferson.edu. Well, it's not spring training without a look at the Osprey, who are all over this area and all over this ballpark as well. They are very protective of their nest. I was watching them the other day. I don't know if it's the mom up there, but oh, she was the chasing, mom up there. <laughs> she was chasing everyone out. Yeah, they've got nests all over the light stanchions. In fact, out in right center field, uh, there is a, a huge nest. Osprey's trying to get itself dry right there. Come, they're coming into the, going out to the Gulf for a little bit. It was probably just out fishing. No pun intended. <laughs> Cord Phelps swings at the first pitch from Simon to begin the third, and quickly he is disposed of. One away, back to the top of the order for Ben Revere. All right, Murph, what about Ben Revere? What's he looking for going into this season? You know, it, both you and I spend a lot of time with Ben uh, in the offseason and manager Ryan Sandberg as the Phils uh, did their winter caravan. And, uh, you know, I got uh, to talking to him about his individual goals and listening to Ryan Sandberg and what he hopes to see out of Ben. You know, you remember last year he had 184 hits. Uh, only 22 of those, though, were for extra bases. And, you know, it, it, which is fine. He batted 306, and they'll take that. But what... Ryan Sandberg wants to see is a little bit more speed out of Ben Revere and to, you know, use those gaps a little bit more. He expects that Ben could have uh, over 40 doubles this year. He had only 13 a year ago and wants to see over 50 steals as well. So those are two of the things that Ben Revere himself is working on that his manager, Ryan Sandberg, is looking for out of his center fielder this year. I wonder, too, if the, the taste of getting so close to 50 stolen bases and the taste of getting so close to a batting title, I wonder how much that drives him going into this year. As an offensive player, you're always driven. You can always be better. I don't care if you're Miguel Cabrera or Ted Williams. You could always be better, and that's what drives us competitively as athletes, especially as hitters, because it's so hard. It's so hard to do. And then defensively, Murph, uh, we were told that he's continued to work on his arm strength. We haven't seen him throw a ball just yet as he skies that one in center field. 
Yeah, yeah there was a lot of talk, obviously, about his uh, arm in center field a year ago, uh, maybe not being where they'd like it to be, but uh, coaches did tell us that he's been working on it, and he's improved his mechanics, which was the, something that they were working on throughout the season last year, but uh, he seems to have kind of improved those over the offseason, and they say that during practice right now, it is uh, noticeably improved, his throw from center field, which is certainly a good thing. Uh, you need that out of your center fielder, so Ben Revere continues to work on that, and, you know, he came into camp in, in excellent shape, as he did a year ago. He's a very strong guy for being a small guy. Uh, he has a lot of upper body strength, so put those two together, and hopefully it is an improved arm out there in center field as well. well I think the other thing, we and we saw today, uh, he needs to continue to get better going after fly balls. And, you know, that one play today where he got way too close to the wall. And that's where your baseball IQ has to come in. Do I really have an opportunity to catch this baseball? There it was. There's your pitch. Pretty close. 63 miles an hour. That is the EFIS pitch for Alfredo. <laughs> One ball, one strike to Herrera. Sacrificed his first time up. Is your day complete now, Tom? If I wanted to see, I wanted to see it be higher, though. I wanted it to really go up high. To the right side, Ian Kinsler comes charging in, and it's an easy three innings for Alfredo Simon. Well, you don't see it that often. Maybe El Duque, maybe Levon, maybe Dave LaRoche. A little Ephus. We've been thinking. Our first Hatfield Dollar Dog Night will be Thursday, April 9th, when the Phillies take on the Boston Red Sox. It's a 7.05 first pitch. Tickets can be purchased anytime by going to phillies.com. You also can take a peek at the entire promotional schedule by going to phillies.com. In fact, uh, later on this week, we are going to unveil some of the promotional items that will be given out at Citizens Bank Park with the help of the Philly Fanatic. That's well, a good day to be out on the berm all around the state of Florida. Grapefruit League games taking place in a little while. The Cactus League games will get underway out in Arizona. Sean O'Sullivan is the new pitcher for the Phils. He's thrown just one inning here on the big field. Last year he did spend time with the Phils and also down in the minors. Swing and a miss by Steven Moya who singled and scored a run his first time up. Big kid. I was going to say between he and Aaron Judge, we're seeing some big ball players with a closed stance. You can see too many guys with a closed stance anymore. That is true. Usually guys are are straight up and down, or they are open in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. You can see his stride foot in front of his his back foot. Outside, two and one. It's one thing to have a close stance, but if you take your stride and go farther towards closer to the plate, you're going to cut yourself off. So if you have that, you need to get back to back to square on your stride. And there you see him do that. You can see when he finishes up, 
he is square to the pitcher. But if you strike closer to the plate, you can be susceptible to fastballs in. I guess it's the old adage it doesn't matter where you start, it's where you finish. Now, you think he starts closed because he's opening up too much? Is that why? Or is it just a possibility? It's definitely a possibility. Two and two to Stephen Moya. He rips that one foul. That gentleman with the Tory Hunter jersey tried to make that catch, but <laughs> that ball was getting on him pretty quickly. Trainer. Yeah, that's going to hurt a little bit. Moya is a home run hitter. He had 35 home runs last year. Fights it off. Two and two. Not everyone can catch a ball when it's hit at them, huh, Tom? Well, again, <laughs> if he had a glove, it would have made it a lot easier for him. Without a glove, you're just you're getting out of the way. Three balls, two strikes. Seriously, that ball gets on you pretty fast. Eh? I don't know how anybody can bear him. Swing and a miss. Almost looked like he fooled him. Fourth strikeout for Phillies pitching. First for O'Sullivan. It's just here it is. See if he can hit it. Right by him. Java Chamberlain warming up in the bullpen for the Tigers. Looks like he'll take over for. Alfredo Simon. Fields homered his first time up an opposite field shot. Seven for 13 now. Fall off with a pretty good location of that pitch, and it's now one and two. Making a bid for number two with that hack. He's not trying to shoot that one <laughs> through the hole on the left side, is he? He's trying to do some convincing. And a called strike three. Back to back strikeouts for O'Sullivan. I do believe that Fields thought that was a little tight. Measure. Front door sinker. And it's nice to see that pitch called at the top of the zone. Marty Foster with a great job. It's a strike. Call it. The unfortunate thing is it's not consistently a strike around baseball. Holiday takes a strike. It's 0 and 1. Nightmares about that front door sinker. It's just hard to swing at a pitch that's starting at your hip or it's starting that far inside. How you get yourself to swing at that. Guys like Greg Maddox made a living on that kind of pitch. Kevin Millwood threw a very good. Front he had door a very pitch. good one. Tim Hudson when he was in Oakland he could. Hey Ben I'm going to throw that front door sinker. OK <laughs> Tim go ahead throw it. And I'd, I'd lock me up every time. Out of play one and two. Stupid pitchers. <laughs> I hate when they outsmart you like that. Got to play again. It remains one and two. Charlie Manuel, Cameron Rupp chatting a little bit. Chase Utley's there as well. And the Phillies dug out.
Off the end of the bat, that'll float out toward left. Sizemore coming on, makes the sliding grab, and it's a one, two, three, fourth inning for O'Sullivan. Two strikeouts and a little fly out to left. Pretty efficient stop. Grady Sizemore able to recover and make the play. When you set. Kids opening day, Phillies bat pack free to fans 14 and under will be Sunday, April 12th at 135. It's all part of the Phils and the Washington Nationals. They'll wrap up that three game series. Tickets can be purchased by going to Phillies.com. And again, you can check out all the information about what's going on, not only with the opening week of games against the Red Sox and the Nationals, but also everything else in Philadelphia for the upcoming season. Three nothing Tigers on top as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Java Chamberlain will be the new pitcher for the Tigers. He got roughed up in his first outing in the spring. Three uh, three hits, two runs, one walk. In fact, it seemed like everybody that pitched that day for the Tigers got roughed up. And Brad Osmond said after the game, he said, you know, and this is not only about Jabba, he said it's about throwing strikes. He said, we just kept falling behind hitters. So Chamberlain will get another look here against the Phils and Dominic Brown, Ryan Howard, Darren Ruff. Brown grounded out to second, his only time up. I'd like to see the Phillies string some hits together, throw a few runs on the board this inning. Three, four, five. Yeah, they've won the last couple of games, but they've done so with very little offense. One nothing yesterday. Now they did score five runs against the Rays. They had a five one lead going into the back end of that ball game, but offense has been tough to come by. They've only hit two home runs this spring and not by the guys you'd expect. No. Xavier Paul. Andres Blanco. He counted for the lone run yesterday. Now the other positives though, I mean the pitching has been outstanding, but they need to start scoring a little bit of runs. Brian Howard waits on deck. Case in point today with two singles. Neither ball has left the infield. Phillies have two home runs as Ben said and 10 doubles so far this spring. So 12 extra base hits. Back toward the box off the glove of Chamberlain picked up and dropped by Iglesias. Well that'll be the third hit. For the Phillies and all three have stayed on the infield. Got a little off front of that breaking pitch. I don't know if that was worse than Simon the Ball <laughs> Revere hit or that one. And that's all these guys do in spring training. Yeah. Pitchers fielding practice. Yep. BFP. 
I mean, you love it as a hitter. It's a knock. Shouldn't be, but it is. That's a good question. Which one was uh, easier? I think Simon's was worse. Yeah, because it was hit, hit so softly. He blew up Ben's bat, and it was just. Well, Ryan Howard is up. He struck out his first time up, and then he swings at the first pitch and hits it foul. Down here in Florida, they're a little more, they're a little easier with their scoring. Maybe in the regular season, that would have been an E1. No, I'm, I'm you think telling you, it's going to be a knock. Two now to Howard. Good thing that chair was there. What an effort <laughs> by the chair. <laughs> chair exerted tons of effort there. Yeah. Ball at 92, just a bit outside. It's one ball and two strikes. Java Chamberlain came up with the Yankees with a whole lot of fanfare. Fanfare it sort of teetered between between being a starting pitcher and a relief pitcher. Out towards second base, bobbled momentarily by Kinsler. They're able to get Brown and not able to get Ryan Howard. Four six on the put out at second base. And one away here in the fourth inning. <laughs> Awfully close to getting Ryan Howard at first base. He did hit it pretty hard. It was nice to see Ryan moving down the first baseline. Quicker than he was last year. Mm -hmm. Darren Ruff reached on an infield hit his first time up. Outside, one ball, no strikes. Al Albuquerque is warming in the pen for the Tigers. That was nasty a couple years ago for Detroit. Eats up a lot of innings for them. Love to see Darren get into one here. Get one up in the jet stream. Yeah, the wind is a uh, friend today for the hitter. Absolutely. The Phillies back in this ball game. That one's off the glove of Hall Holiday. Having a little bit of difficulty behind the plate here today. All right, catcher, is that a pass ball or a wild pitch? That's a pass ball. Yeah. I don't know if he was crossed up or not. He's out talking to Chamberlain. It might just be about the runner in scoring position now. I think he was just lazy. And again, I know Ryan Howard's not going to steal a bag there, but you see Holiday back on it on this on his heels. You don't want your momentum going towards the umpire. You still need to get an athletic position. I just think he got caught back on his heels and got lazy. Two and two to Darren Ruff. Hey, let's go in here. Water.
Outside ball four and the Phils put two runners on base with one man down here in the fourth inning. And Grady Sizemore will be the batter. The Phillies have had opportunities here today. They had runner in the first and the second inning. Nothing in the third and now they've got two on here in the fourth. Job has always had this stuff, but this is something that has plagued him. Challenge guys. He's got a very good fastball, not the fastball he had when he got caught up with the Yankees. Start putting guys on base, you run into issues. He had a great fastball when he came up. He also had a very good slider, too. He sure did. Sizemore takes on the outside corner. He's one of those guys that have gone through the Tommy John surgery during his career. Strange thing about Jabba when he was. When he had the Tommy John surgery, he was still throwing in the 90s. When they decided he needed the surgery. Over to left field, it's not deep. Playable for Collins. And now two outs here in the fourth. And Howard back to second, rough over to first. And here's Carlos Ruiz. It's funny about pitchers, though. Guys that lose their velocity, they feel like they can't challenge anyone. You might not have that velocity, but you still make good quality pitches with your fastball. In out, up down. And we mentioned his fastball isn't where it was when he was old when he was younger, but it's still in the low 90s. Yeah, exactly. Carlos out toward right center field, gliding under it is Fields. And the Phils will leave a couple here in the fourth inning. They've left four through the first four innings. You know how charitable they can be. Groups of 25 or more are eligible for fundraising opportunities that benefit their designated cause. It's a great way to raise funds and awareness. Learn more at phillies.com slash group tickets. We'll go to the top of the fifth inning. The Tigers lead it 3-0. Aaron Westlake will lead it off against Sean O'Sullivan. It'll be Westlake, Kinsler, and then Iglesias for the Tigers. The Tigers didn't bring a whole lot of extra players. And since the trip from Lakeland is a little more than an hour or so, probably see these guys for at least three at bats, maybe a little bit more. We'll see. O'Sullivan, who pitched a scoreless fourth inning, delivers low and inside, one ball, no strikes. Two 
and one. Talk about location, how important it is. And O'Sullivan so far has been right around the plate. And good luck hitting that 2 0 pitch. And that one sails out. It's three and one. That's what I found when I was scuffling. And I did get into a good hitter's count 2 0, 3 1. They would throw that pitch down and away. You swing at it, you're not going to do anything with it. I have to tell you that every time you start saying that, when you talk about your approach as a hitter, I have to think a, a little bit because, you know, you also pitched. So when you were about to say, you know, when I struggled a little bit, I didn't know if you meant on the mound or if you meant at the plate. It was. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to assume that most of the time you're talking about yes, hitting. Yes. Out of the 16 years, 15 were behind the dish. There's the three two pitch. Off the hands looped out toward right center. That's going to drop for a base hit. So Westlake is aboard to start this fifth inning. And Ian Kinsler's coming to the plate. The sinker there end up cutting back towards Westlake. Kinsler tripled his last time up in a ball that was misplayed off the wall by Revere. He would have had an extra base hit anyway. He now has five hits this spring, five for 11. Because Kinsler's with the Tigers, that's why Detroit was able to acquire Anthony Ghost from the Blue Jays to help stabilize the outfield. Ghost is probably going to be their center fielder. And Kinsler, who's kind of locked up at second, they were able to trade one of their second base prospects to the Toronto Blue Jays, who we saw the other day. 0 oh 2. Kinsler, not a big guy, but he's got some thump. 173 home runs during his major league career. Spent eight years with the Texas Rangers before the Tigers picked him up before last season. He's a no stride guy. So basically his, his front foot he just lifts that heel up and the toe stays in place. I'd see guys like that I always want to go down and away. Always want to go down and away. Now why is that? Because you get in that situation you got your toe. And just basically lift up that heel. I always found that them to be more susceptible to pitches down and away. It was harder for them to, to reach out and get them or let the ball travel because your foot is not moving. We'll take a look at this the side view of his swing. Just lifts that that heel up. He does stand fairly close to the plate, so he does have some some pretty good coverage. Two balls, two strikes. Fly ball left center field. It's not deep. Long run for Revere. He's there. And he makes the catch. So Kinsler's retired. All right, let's take a look again at Ian Kinsler and his uh, his approach. If you watch this foot right here, it doesn't move. He basically just lifts that heel up and puts it down. Yeah, that doesn't move much at all. No. One thing that does do as a hitter, your head doesn't move. The last thing you want is your head to go up and down or move laterally. It just changes how you see the pitch.
Here's Iglesias who doubled his last time up off the leg of Miguel Alfredo Gonzalez. The liner went off of Miguel's leg and then shot toward the Phillies dugout. Another throw over. Westlake is back without a tag. Fly ball left field. Playable for Sizemore. And there are two outs. And that'll bring Tyler Collins up. Phillies are also scheduled to throw Jake Diekman today and Kenny Giles. Mentioned the Tigers are going to throw Al Albuquerque today. In fact, he's continuing to warm up uh, in the bullpen. They've got a few other guys that are on the rosters to possibly pitch. Collins fouls it away. It's 0 1. Bill Sullivan has one more in him. Oh, he's been pretty limited as far as the number of pitches he's thrown. He's got 32 right now. So they're stretching him out to be a starter. So you would think, yeah, if he's along the same path as. What they anticipated from Miguel Alfredo Gonzalez. Broke his bat softly to short. And Freddie Galvis had a little trouble initially, but he's able to wrap up this fifth inning. No runs, one hit, one man left. Good job so far for two innings for O'Sullivan. Fifteenth annual teacher appreciation night presented by GDF Suez is Friday, May 8th at 705. Nominate your teacher now. See Phillies.com slash teacher for more information. Last of the fifth inning here in Clearwater. Beautiful afternoon for baseball. Phillies offense has managed only three infield hits so far against two different Tigers pitchers. And now it's time for the third pitcher of the day for Detroit. And that's right under Al Albuquerque. So he'll take over for Jabba Chamberlain, who went one inning. Albuquerque last year, a 2.51 earned run average. He is now 28 years old. Last year, he pitched in 72 games for the Tigers. Back in 2011, he pitched in 41 games. And had an earned run average of 1.87. Then he'll face Freddie Galvis, Cord Phelps, and then the top of the order for the Phils. Not many names with three U's and two Q's in it. It's a long name. <laughs> Taking the almost the entire back of his jersey. Galvis popped out his first time up. Takes a strike. It's 0 and 1. There we go. Q, Q, U, U.
Dallas lines it to right field. And it's caught by J.D. Martinez. One out here in the fifth. By the way, Ben, I don't want to, I'm not the first one to do this, but on television, I'll be the first one. I, I want to wish you a happy birthday. Ben. Well, thank you, Tom. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you. Can you believe it? 38 years young Why today. Why are you not playing <laughs> still? You're 38. <laughs> you could be a backup catcher still if you want to. I know, but you're still in good shape. I mean, be out there. You could hit 205, 220, <laughs> can't you? Hope so. <laughs> Well, thank you for saying that. 38 years young today. 38 years old. Mm. You know, my five-year-old was, she called me yesterday, and she said, happy birthday, Daddy. Preparation. I just forgot it was my birthday. Really? I did. Well, wait till you hit, hit into your mid-40s. Then you're going to forget every year it's your birthday. <laughs> On purpose, though, right? That's exactly right. Cord Phelps, the batter. He's 0 for 1. He grounded out to shortstop. Two balls and no strikes to him. Yeah. And that one is lined into center field, a base hit. Fourth hit of the day for the Phils. It's a one-out single. And then Ben Revere will come up. Great piece of hitting there by Cord. You know, Galvis is out. It was out, but it was a hard out. It was, mm -hmm. it was he hit it hard. That's just a great piece of hitting by Phelps. Yeah, with Freddie's that he wasn't too long with that swing or anything no, like that? No, not at all. He squared it up. I think the wind hurt it a little bit. You know, you have that crosswind. But Phelps in that situation, if he tries to do more with that pitch, it's going to be a 4-3 rollover. That one slides in for a strike. It's 0-1 to Revere. Revere is 1-2. for two. Infield single his first time up. Off the glove of the starter, Alfredo Simon. And he's also flied out to center field. the runner pitch is slapped foul and it's one ball and two strikes Phelps got an excellent jump he just now realized that ball was hit out of play he had that one stolen yeah Phillies have talked about doing that a lot more how much more can we anticipate seeing a little of this here Ben well, I think you can see a good amount. Obviously, you can see that the Phillies are struggling to score runs. So how can they manufacture these runs? How can we get runners in the scoring position where we can get a sacrifice fly? We can get a, a safety squeeze. We can get runners in by not stringing a whole bunch of hits together. As you can see, it, it's, it's been tough thus yeah. far. Now, whether this is the the pattern that we'll see during the regular season, I mean, who knows? But you know, so far, there it there is a lack of offense through the first seven now eight games of this spring. Fortunately, today they've had runners in scoring position because Holiday's had so much trouble behind the plate, but they haven't been able to score. And a called strike three. Revere down, looking two outs here in the fifth inning. Well, it was letter high. Herrera is 0 for 1. A sacrifice his first time up. Same pitch O'Sullivan got on on fields yep. a couple innings ago. 
You talked about Marty Foster calling that pitch. Well, they talk about speeding up the game. There are those advocates, and I, I agree with this too, is that the umpires would go with the, the strikes on the way it's written. That could speak speed up the game as well or Correct. add to the speed up rules. It'll help a lot more than you think. Swing and a miss and a breaking pitch 0 and 1. A lot of moving parts up there, isn't it, Tom? There are. You know, watching him so far this spring, he's been able to connect and get those moving parts to, you know, to get through the ball. But that must be where his, if he does struggle, where his timing is off a little bit. Yeah. Everything has to be perfect. That giant leg kick, the hands moving, all to get on time. He certainly walks with a, an air of confidence about him though. I mean I think that's that's a good thing for him as he's trying to impress yeah. people. He doesn't seem at all overwhelmed. And we touched on it the other day. I think winning the batting title in Venezuela in the winter league. It's a feather in your cap. I mean you're going to feel pretty good about yourself. Chopper over to first. That is a foul ball. First base umpire. And I believe that's Tom Howie. And yep, that's Tom. It's his call once it leaves the uh, goes across the bag. So Phelps goes back to second. It's a great feeling as a hitter. To get another oh. life. <laughs> <laughs> Not saying he'll hopefully he will do something with it, yeah. but it's just like <sighs> okay, here we go. I got new life. Let's make something happen. Well, Holiday, the catcher, was heading back to the dugout. The first baseman was kind of surprised when it was called a ball, uh, called a foul ball. Look fair from here. Slice out of play and it remains 0 and 2. Well, Herrera walks out of the batter's box and by the new rules. He can do that on a foul ball. He does not have to keep a foot in the box. Herrera does make the ball club. And he shows the ability to hit lefties. I think you might see him in the two hole. We saw him the sacrifice bunt earlier in the game. He's got a little pop. It's a matter of how much he's going to play. Swing and a miss. The breaking ball, and Holiday will fire to first, and the Phillies are retired here in the fifth inning. They had a runner in scoring position, but unable to score. They trail a 3 0 as we head to the sixth.
Well, today's game summary uh, features very little offense for the Phils. As we go to the top of the sixth inning, it's 3 0. Tigers on top. Four hits for the Phils. New third baseman for the Phils is Russ Kanzler. Moving from third base over to second base is Cord Phelps. And still on the mound is right at Sean O'Sullivan. He's looked strong. He's allowed just one hit through two innings of work. Miguel Alfredo Gonzalez went two plus before he was hit with a line drive. And then Seth Rosine pitched a scoreless inning of relief. A little bit of a delay. The Fanatics having a little trouble getting his uh, four wheeler going. It's running right now. But he just can't get it. There we go. <laughs> Murph will have a full report on the Fanatics four wheeler as it, zo it zooms right past him. Watch out, Murph. <laughs> that, that is really in depth interviewing right there, Murph. <laughs> it, it did not sound good. No. <laughs> there was a sound coming out of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sounded like my car. <laughs> the the four wheeling. <laughs> was it the flux capacitor, Murph? <laughs> Just so you know, Ben, that's what we got you for your birthday was that ATV, but you got to fix it. <laughs> be perfect for the farm. Yeah. No balls and one strike to J.D. Martinez. Martinez 0 for 2. He's popped out and flied out. Mm. And missed over the middle. It's somewhere. <laughs> one ball, one strike. That one's hooked out toward left field. Sizemore on the run, and it is gone. Four nothing. Tigers on top. Second home run of the day. First home run of the spring for Martinez. Sinker that just went right into his zone. That wasn't bad. It was pitchers down. He went down and got it. Best thing he did on that was stay through the ball. He's saying get to it, and he finished up high and created backsman despite it being a low pitch. Castellanos takes strike one. It's 0 and 1. No, well, Martinez with the second home run of the day for the Tigers. The other one came off the bat of Daniel Fields back in the second. Off the front of the Phillies dugout. And it remains one ball and two strikes. Thinking about the Tigers in the American League Central, you know, they won the division last year. And obviously, the White Sox have gotten better with the pitchers that they've picked up. Be out Chris, without Chris Sale for a while. Check swing. Did he go? Yes. And Castellanos is down on strikes. One away. Stephen Moya will come up. Let's check back in with Murph. Murph, I know this isn't an update on the ATV, but you've got another update. <laughs> no, the ATV has been parked safely and uh, it had some help getting into the tunnel there. So <laughs> we'll, we'll check on that. But, you know, we're celebrating Ben Davis's birthday today. Everybody is celebrating <laughs> Ben Davis's birthday. But the Phillies are also celebrating an anniversary of sorts. Did you know, Tom, that on this date 60 years ago today, uh, the Phillies played their first game ever at Jack Russell Stadium mm. down here in Clearwater. And uh, it was against the Detroit Tigers. Uh, they won that game 4-2. Uh, can you guess who maybe got the win in that game, T-Mac? You can't guess, Ben, because I already told you. <laughs> well, I just saw the graphic up on the... Uh, oh, well, that, that'll probably make it easier then. Uh, <laughs> yeah. How about Robin Roberts? Robin Roberts, yeah. that's right. 
Not too, not too bad. 60 years ago. 60 years ago today. Of course, Jack Russell's still around. Fly ball to left field. Look out, Murph. Sizemore's on the run, and it is gone. Just inside the pole. An opposite field home run for Moya. Three home runs today for the Tigers. Five nothing Detroit. Boy, they got some strong guys on this team. That's what you call getting it in the jet stream. Yeah. That's a pop up. Good pitch down and away. Yeah, that was wind aided. Here's Fields. He has one of the three homers, and it's one ball and no strikes. And Murph alluded to Jack Russell Stadium. It's only a few miles away from uh, Bright House Field, not too far. And they still do utilize it for other events, not the Phillies, but the city of Clearwater. That one's cracked out toward right center field. Revere on the run. He's not going to get it. It'll take a hop and roll toward the track. And Fields is going to take advantage. No, no, he's going to stop. I think Ben misread that a little bit and thought it was going to go to the wall. It didn't, but Fields thought about going for three, but settles for, for a double. I think you've seen O'Sullivan get gassed. He's gassed right now. Yeah. He's not used to throwing this many pitches. This is third inning of work. Balls are just starting to get elevated on him. Yeah, whereas the home run was by Moya was helped out by the wind somewhat. The wind sort of hurt that last ball that Fields just hit. Yeah. Nephew Gondo is warming in the bullpen for the Phillies. Bob McClure and Sean O'Sullivan know each other from the Kansas City Royals organization. So he'll stick around. And Brian Holiday will be the batter. Probably a situation during the regular season you would see Fields test Ben Revere and the relay to get to third base. There's one out. Do everything in your power to get to third. Yeah, that's part of what you take into account if you do enough studying the outfielder's arm and how strong it is on plays like that. And which way they're ranging, which way their momentum is taking them. Mm -hmm. One thing to, to hit a ball in the gap, and, you know, you're feeling good about yourself. You got to think, can I get to the next base? Up and in, one ball, one strike. out toward left field Sizemore out toward the track will it stay in the yard it does what a grab by Grady Sizemore <laughs> two outs here in the sixth inning he had a long way to go to get this one he sure did Not only is the wind blowing right to left, but it's blowing out, obviously. So that made the ball go that much farther towards the, I call it a fair pole. It's, <laughs> it's, it's fair. 
You're going to go against the grain, huh? Fair fall. On that one, I yeah. will. But no, that was a great play because he had to go obviously deep, but he also had to range far to his left. No, Sullivan's done after 49 pitches. Nephew Ganda will be the new pitcher. Every day is a fun day when you spend it at a Phillies game with your group of 25 or more. Take advantage of special group opportunities, including discounts, theme nights, party areas, and much more. No matter what size group, there are always benefits and special options. For more information, check out phillies.com slash group tickets. Slow up Ben Davis and Greg Murphy. I'm Tom McCarthy. It's 5 nothing Tigers on a beautiful, sunshiny afternoon here in Clearwater, Florida. Where the Phillies trail the Tigers 5 0. Phillies will use their fourth pitcher of the day. As Nephi Ogando will start loosening up and he will face a, a pinch hitter. Nope, he'll face Aaron Westlake and then Josh Wilson, a pinch hitter. So Westlake up for the third time. He's one for two. Pitches a fastball in there. Ogando at 96. He was at 95 96 the other day. Two strikes. There's that high strike again. Marty Foster calling. Nice going, Marty. <laughs> Swing the bat, boys. Swing the bats. As a hitter, you want a hanging breaking ball like that to hit. They do go a long way. You, know, you look back at them, that's not a strike. No, that's the one I want to hit. Down it away. So two balls, two strikes. Westlake just looked back at Marty Foster just to confirm the count because on the board here it says three and one, but it is two and two. First, Ryan Howard stays down on it and he'll just take it to the bag. But the Tigers do score a couple more runs. They've hit three home runs here this afternoon, two in this inning. There's the first and the second came off the bat of Stephen Moya.
Baseball is back in 2015 with MLB.com at bat on your smartphone or tablet. Stay connected with live radio broadcasts, stats, breaking news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Some changes for the Tigers. Marte takes over at third base for Detroit. It's Jeffrey Marte. Javi Betancourt is the second number 33 in the game today for the Tigers. Josh Wilson, who was on deck to pinch hit in the top of the sixth inning, comes in to play second base. And right field is Xavier Henry, or Avery, I should say. Dominic Brown will lead things off against the new pitcher. It's Blaine Hardy. Dominic slices it out toward left. Playable for Collins. One away. There's a new first baseman in as well for the Tigers. It's Jordan Leonardton. You see the numbers on Hardy. Last year, a 2.54 ERA. 31 strikeouts in 39 innings, and now Ryan Howard will bat. There's Leonardton. It's a dreadful day for a, in a spring training game for a left-handed hitter when they see the lefties on the roster and know that at some point they're going to come in just because they're in the lineup for lefty on lefty opportunities. That's why I was a switch hitter. I was say, that's why you were a switch hitter. <laughs> I would have won the count. Out of play 0-2. Oh As a hitter, you can't think that way. You have to still go up and battle. You have to go up and get your hits. I don't care if it's a righty or lefty out there. He's just another pitcher. But that that is what other managers do. Like they make sure they know all right, the Phillies have Brown, they have Howard. We know they have lefties, so we want a guy like this, Hardy, to come in to face Ryan Howard to do try to do just that. Yeah. You definitely want, especially in the American League, you want to see how lefties match up against other lefties. Because they can run different guys out there because of the DH. That is a filthy pitch right there. Here's Darren Ruff, who is one for one with a walk today. Seems to have a very good approach today to the pitchers that he's facing. Darren always seems to have good takes. Slow with his front foot. Pop up on the infield, the shortstop, Betancourt, comes running in. I think he's having trouble with it, and that's why the third baseman was able to come over and help clean that up. Side is retired in order for the Phils. We'll head to the seventh.
All right, game summary for this afternoon. The Phillies uh, have been out homeward today. That's a big story. They're trailing five nothing. Three different home runs for the Tigers. Alfredo Simon pitched three innings, allowed uh, two hits and no runs as the starter for Detroit. The Phillies have four singles this afternoon. Revere, Ruff, Brown, and Phelps. Three of those four have not left the infield. Miguel Alfredo Gonzalez went two plus before a line drive uh, forced him to exit. So we go to the top of the seventh inning. And Nephi Ogando will continue. It's a lazy kind of day here in Clearwater. Bright sunshiny afternoon. Temperatures are in the 80s. And Ogando, who came on to get the final out in the sixth, will face Josh Wilson here in the seventh inning. Pitches inside, 1 0. It'll be Wilson and then Betancourt. Freddie Galvis still in the game. And he takes care of Wilson. So, one away here in the seventh inning. I don't think Freddie has been blemished at all at shortstop in the early part of spring. Right? He does have some good hands. Speaking of good hands, there's a gentleman here with the Tigers today. Played some decent shortstop for the Indians. Omar Vizquel. Omar Vizquel is over in the first base coach's box. He was there earlier. I don't think he's there now, but he got me a few times. He got just about everybody. There he is. Is Omar. We're in number 15. He had some good hands and made himself a very good hitter. Charlie Manuel helped him out a lot. People always say, you know, he's he's always a big question when it comes to the Hall of Fame. Is he a Hall of Famer? Here's Charlie Manuel and talking to uh, Omar Vizquel and Mick Bill Meyer and some of the other coaches for the Tigers. There he is laughing. Mickey's always laughing. Swing and a miss. And it's one and two. There's Chuck. He had Omar when he was in Cleveland. All right, so Omar Vizquel uh, finished his major league career. And I know we look at offense all the time when it comes to the Hall of Fame, and, you know, for obvious reasons. But he finished with 2,877 hits during his career, a lifetime 272 hitter. And you couple that with the defense that he put together as a player. I mean, he's a, he's a Hall of Famer. He, <laughs> he was phenomenal. Didn't have the best arm. He knew when to get rid of it quickly. But he was something. Well, now two outs. He range. The way he handled it, I mean, I'm telling you, he made himself, and Charlie helped out a lot in that, but he was a very productive offensive player. Well, it's kind of the same storyline with Ozzie Smith, how good he was uh, defensively, and then he made himself into a, a good enough hitter offensively to be, you know, a Hall of Famer. Way outside, it's 1-0. Well, Charlie always talks glowingly about a lot of the players he had in Cleveland, like uh, Albert Bell and... Omar Vizquel, guys like that. Carlos Baerga, Juan Gonzalez, Manny Ramirez. A long list of guys. Decent lineup. Yeah. Huh? One ball, one strike. Ogando's been around 95, 96 in this inning or so of work. You see Nesbitt. Looks like he'll be the next guy into the game for the Tigers. One ball, two strikes to Jason Krizan, who hitting 143 this spring. And a called strike three. It's been a strike all day long. A one, two, three, seventh inning for Nephew Gondo. Four up, four down for the hard throwing right hander. Why do you want to touch?
Time at Bright House Field in Clearwater, the Phillies trail the Tigers five to nothing on a beautiful day for baseball. I'm Neil Hartman coming up at four o'clock on Comcast Sportsnet. We'll have a very special Sportsnet Central with all the latest Eagles free agency news. Ray Dittinger and Barrett Brooks will join me for a full hour leading up to Philly Sports Talk at five o'clock. But now let's head back to beautiful Florida. Tom McCarthy, Bright House Field. Tom. <laughs> One of you, All right, Neil, thank you very much. As we go to the bottom of the seventh inning, it's 5 0 Detroit on top, a sold out crowd here in Clearwater. Some changes for the Tigers. Winton Bernard is now in center field. Krasan is in left field for Detroit. And the new catcher is Manny Pena. And the new pitcher is right hander Angel Nesbitt. And the first pitch to Sizemore is taken for a ball, 1 0 at 96 miles an hour. You see his numbers this spring two innings and a 4.50 earned run average. Ogando looked pretty good for the Phillies, didn't he? Looked excellent. Hard, heavy ball. I really, really like the fact that he wasn't afraid to go in on righties. Got some guys off the plate. And it does open up the outer the outer edge. Especially first pitch. You get one that's it's in. Man, it makes for an uncomfortable bat. Well, command uh, obviously is an issue for a lot of young pitchers. And for Ogando over from the Red Sox organization, his command this afternoon was as good as we've seen. Two and one to Sizemore. Sizemore walked his first time up, flied out to left his last time. Oh man. Thankfully that hit the tarp because that was not going to be a good thing if it didn't hit the tarp. That ball was drilled. There's Jake Diekman loosening in the bullpen. So we get a miss, a little high heat, 97. Yeah, and that'll bring Carlos Ruiz to the plate. We had this discussion before the game, Tom. Does anyone throw 90, 92 anymore? No. Nope. <laughs> Everybody's in the upper 90s. And, and it's across the board. I mean, it's happening on every level. Blows my mind. I don't want to be the back when I played guy, but if the reliever came in, the guy would come back to the bench. Hey, boys, get it ready. You know, he's 94, 95. <laughs> <laughs> hey boys, get it ready. He's 100 and 101. I mean, it's it's every guy now. Well, the game has become so specialized, and kids who are coming up and playing professionally are so specialized with just playing baseball. One ball, one strike. Ruiz scalds one out toward right center field. But it's playable for Bernard. Well, that's one of the best balls he's hit this spring. Yeah. And there are two outs. Ball was hit well. Buck can feel good about that. Buck Farmer's the right-hander warming up in the bullpen. He's got to be from the Midwest. The name like Buck Farmer. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you in just a second. Buck Farmer went to Georgia Tech. Hamlin Wreck. Yep. He is out of Rockdale County High School in Georgia. Oh. Playoff. Oh, and one to Freddie Galvis. Freddie popped out and flied out. Chopper to first and a big easy hop for Leonardson. Boy, what an easy inning 
for the hard throwing right hander eight in a row retired by Tigers pitching. We've been thinking a pitcher who can paint the corners is. Altair who's going to take over in left field for the Phillies as we go to the top of the eighth inning. Brian Bogusevic is now in right field. That shortstop is Chase Darno. Freddie Galvis's afternoon is complete. Rene Garcia is back behind the plate and the new pitcher is left hander Jake Diekman. Diekman on here to pitch the eighth inning. Kenny Giles is also scheduled to pitch today. Last year Diekman 100 strikeouts. Had an ERA of 3.80. Well, with the changes that have been made to the Phillies outfield, uh, Grady Sizemore's afternoon is done, and he is down in left field, ready to talk to Murph. Murph? Yeah, put in the good day's work, did Grady Sizemore, and uh, all done. Uh, let's talk big picture right now, first of all, because uh, in the offseason, you had a decision to make uh, where you're going to play baseball this year. The Phil's off of your deal, and you come back for your second opportunity with this team. Was it an easy decision? Uh, yeah, it's pretty easy. You know, uh, I feel comfortable here. I like the way uh, like the way the, the year finished for me, and, and just coming over here, just the adjustment. I thought it was a good transition for me, so I, I was happy to come back. You know, it, it, so much talk uh, over the years uh, as you made your way back into the big leagues. You know about your health, but not a whole lot to talk about it now because uh, you come into camp and, and you feel pretty good, do you not? Yeah, you know, I feel good. Still, you know, trying to get uh, trying to get, get back to regular season form. I think uh, you know, still got some uh, some gains to make physically, and uh, just need the reps really. Well, you're going to get those reps, obviously, in spring training. And, and a lot of talk about the battling for outfield jobs here. And, uh, you know, it's an interesting storyline for us to follow uh, as you come into camp. Uh, how do you approach that? Uh, no different. I think you just uh, you come in here every day looking to, looking to get better, looking to just kind of get your time in and uh, see pitches and, and, and have good days in the outfield and just work. And, you know, whatever happens, happens. You made a heck of a catch down here in the corner earlier in this game. Did you have that one all the way? Uh, you know, the sun was kind of blocking a little bit. I was a little worried I might lose it. But, uh, you know, it's a crazy day here with the wind. Um, but, you know, I got lucky. All right, Grady, thanks for stopping. We appreciate it. Guys, back upstairs. All right, Murph, we do appreciate that. It's kind of interesting to listen to Grady Sizemore say getting back into everyday or major league shape as that one is punched the opposite way by Avery. A leadoff single here in the eighth inning. He missed so much time because of those uh, two knee injuries and an assortment of other uh, injuries during his time with the Cleveland Indians. Uh, he hasn't been an everyday player in the last couple of years, so he's he he's a former Gold Glove center fielder. Yeah. I mean he he was on the edge of throwing up some big numbers every year. Three time All Star, I believe, correct? Mm -hmm. Had a great following in Cleveland, but he was. It's nice to see him back, though. You know these guys don't take anything for granted. Marte takes a strike. It's 0 and 1. And, you know, we had meetings uh, about a week or so ago with uh, Ryan Sandberg and Ruben Amaro and Bob McClure and a couple other folks. And it seemed like Sizemore, at least from those conversations, had the edge as the starting left fielder coming into spring training. But the competition was still open. I think it is something that's going to play out to the end of spring. Who can provide 
enough offense to sustain an everyday job. Yeah, and the way the offense is going, and because there is such a lack of it so far, if somebody decides to just start hitting and is on fire, yes, their defense is going to be considered, but their offense may have to override that defense. Yeah. The diving play that, that Grady, or the sliding play, I should say, that Grady made earlier in the game, does Darren Ruff catch that ball? Maybe not. One ball, one strike to Marte. But how much damage can these guys do at the plate? Right. Well, you talked about it before, protection for Ryan Howard or whoever is in the middle of that lineup. Now, I'm not saying that either one of those guys would be, but there's a chance they could be protection for whoever's in the middle of the lineup, or they could be in the middle of the lineup. And I think you're going to see Ryan Sandberg mix and match. The lineup's not going to be the same. You know, we saw Charlie roll that same lineup out every night. And it worked for so many years, so... It was a no-brainer for Charlie, but I think with Rhino knowing matchups and, and how to position guys, where to insert them in the lineup. Fredder goes, pitches take it inside. The throw to second by Garcia is in time. Wow, boy Garcia got rid of that one quickly. That still fires me up. See, you, you can still you still got the fire to play. That was a nice on the pick. Dirt. Good night. Thanks for coming. I think Avery felt like his hand was in there before the tag, but it was still a quick release for Garcia. Howitzer. Three balls, two strikes to Marte. One thing to pick it, but you see how he got his momentum moving towards second base? And that's right. When I do work with, with kids, I tell them, hey, your goal is out in second base. You have to get your momentum going that way. Some guys catch it and they, they slide, they slide, and they'll go towards third base. No, you want all your momentum going towards second base. That's how you get the carry on ball. Watch he gets going forward, and he stayed down as well. That was as good as you can do it. Way inside, and it's ball four. So Marte is aboard with a one-out walk. Jake not happy with himself there. And now Steven Moya will be the hitter. He homered his last time up. He's two for three this afternoon. ever fouled a ball off his right leg, Tom? <laughs> I think he's done it on two different occasions at least. <laughs> he's well protected on <laughs> from his kneecap to his shin. He's also susceptible to that pitch right there. There's two outs. There you see. Could be part of that close stance. Boy, that is nasty against the left-hander right there. That's the one-two pitch I wanted to see off Avery. He threw another fastball. Avery shot it to left. Good job of hitting, but nice to see Jake bounce back after that walk. He was upset. Well, you could see he was visibly upset with himself. Miss at a 97 mile an hour fastball. It's one ball and one strike to Bernard. Tigers have reached double digits and hits. They have five runs on 10 hits here this afternoon. Miss. 
He's overmatching some of these young hitters right now. It's because you're throwing it harder doesn't mean you have to swing harder. <laughs> <laughs> Got to climb the ladder again, don't you? He's going after it. He's swinging as soon as the ball leaves his hand. Out toward left center field. He got a piece of that one. It was down in his zone. It's going to go all the way to the wall. Tigers are going to get another RBI and another extra base hit. As Bernard slides in safely at third, Marte scores. And it's 6 nothing in favor of Detroit. Why? Why are you speeding his bat up? He just threw two right by him. And if you were to ask him right now, he'd say, I want to work on it. <laughs> it's fine. He said to throw it. It didn't even have to be a fastball up. It could be, you know, belt high. He's going to throw right by swing him. It, yeah. So 11 hits now for the Tigers. And here is Manny Pena. With two outs here in the eighth. Sales high, one and zero. What would you tell him right now? What is he? What are you seeing behind the plate? I'll just go give him a, a breather. Say, so, hey, you're throwing the ball well. Obviously, his velocity is there. 96, 97, just pretty much the whole inning. Concentrate on finishing your pitches. Let's get out of it. A 97, 2 0 heater. No big deal, Tom. He's got so much ability. 100 strikeouts last year. And a call, strike three, 96 in the same spot, two strikeouts of the inning for Jake Diekman. The Tigers do score a run, an RBI triple, 6 nothing. Detroit on top. Conversation going on in between innings between Jake Diekman and Bob McClure. Larry Boa sitting and listening as well. Diekman was able to get through that inning. He did allow a run on an RBI triple. Then Buck Farmer will be the new pitcher for the Detroit Tigers. And he'll face Cord Phelps to start things off.
Phelps today is one for two. Farmer nine and a third, 12 hits. Last year for the Tigers. First pitch is over, it's 0 and 1. Ground ball to first. And an easy play for the first out here in the eighth inning. Kenny Giles is loosening up to the bullpen for the Phillies, so it looks like he'll be the next one out in the ninth. Today really isn't a whole lot about, I mean, obviously they gave up three home runs, but it's more about the offense and managing just four hits again this afternoon. Ben Revere is one for three. Three of those hits are infield hits. Revere will be followed by Russ Kanzler. I think this is a case of, you know, Ben Revere would have been done after three at bats, and he said, you know what, Rhino, I need one more. Would you, you do that from time to time? Absolutely. I would go down to the minor league games and, and go get 12 at bats in one day. Just go rotate. You know how they have the quad? Yeah. And I started to do that. Edgar Martinez, on days he wouldn't hit, he would still hit. <laughs> <laughs> He would go literally from field to field. There's four different games going on. So he'd see four different pitchers. At least he knew he would. Yeah, and he'd get 12, 15 at bats. Mm. Off the plate. I mean, ben probably won't play the outfield in the ninth. But I think that may have been a case of wanting to get another one. But, Wait, wait, wait. Well, they had a big chart in Ryan Sandberg's office. It's the same spot where they had it with Charlie Manuel was managing where they, they tabulate all the at bats. They want to make sure that guys get a certain amount of at bats each and every spring. Kanzler takes strike and it's 0 and 1. Phillies are back home again tomorrow. Breaking ball 0 and 2. Good pitch. And another breaking pitch and a call. Strike three. An easy 1 2 3 inning for Buck Farmer. Eating the books. On to the ninth. Kenny Giles next up for the Phils. Well, it seems like you've done this before, Ben. Uh, Darren Mastriani comes in to play center field for Ben Revere after Revere's fourth at bat of the afternoon. So he's on to play center, and the new pitcher will be right hander Kenny Giles. Giles takes over for Deekman here in the ninth inning. Giles coming off a solid rookie season. He finished third in the National League in the Rookie of the Year voting. Jacob DeGrom of the Mets uh, won the Rookie of the Year award. 
Kenny struggled the other day in his first outing, but I look for him to bounce back. Trey made those adjustments in the bullpen. This is his first time out. So I know your folks are in town, Tom. Yeah. And I knew you were going to take me out for supper for my birthday. Right, exactly. Where would you have taken me? Uh, well, I would have probably taken you to Villa Galachi on Indian Rocks. Yeah? Yeah, I know you like Italian food. It's a great place. I do. Uh, or I might take you to uh, a buffet because I know you like to eat a lot of food. So. Uh, me. <laughs> I am really good at it. You are very good at it. So I would have probably taken you somewhere. It would have been up to you, but I would have leaned toward Villa Galachi. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll take a rain check then. First pitch is up high. I want to know, but Murph's family is not in town, so Murph will take you out to dinner. Murph? Uh, I'd be happy to take Ben out to dinner yeah. for his birthday. <laughs> Maybe get Matt involved, too. Matt's here at the ballpark A little park presumptuous today. of me. I might have to take out a small loan. <laughs> one and one the count. I've seen my man eat. Plus, you got to get dessert because it is his birthday, although you did get dessert from some dessert. folks today. Yeah, I'm not, I did get some dessert from, from uh, family, friends from back home. They came down. So instead of order, ordering a cake, Murph, you just order him another steak. Yes. And put a candle on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on it. One ball, one strike. Up and in, two and one. Jordan Leonardson hitting 417 this spring for the Tigers. Strike all day. Up in the zone. Rene Garcia brought it back a little bit. That's a bit too high. Ball four. So a leadoff walk for Leonardton. And now Josh Fields up for the second time. Or essentially Josh Wilson up for the second time. You know, somebody asked me the other day what what division will be the best one in baseball and I said probably the West in the National League. But just looking at the American League Central it, it's not going to be a shabby division at all. Considering you have the Royals the American League pennant winner. The Tigers who won the division last year. The White Sox who are improved. The Indians who are improved. I think the teams in that division realize, hey, we just can't let, the Tigers are going to bring it every year. You know, they do have a, a little bit bigger pocketbook. So they can go out and, and get some players and, and sign bigger contracts. But, yes, I agree. It's going to be a tough division. I was talking about Chris Sales before with the White Sox. Yeah. Broke his foot unloading a truck. So he will be on the shelf. Some freaky injuries this spring, huh? Out toward left field. Altair. And one out. Well, here's the American League Central a year ago with the Tigers winning 90 games. The Royals right behind them. The Royals really had to kick it into high gear as the season moved on. The one team that probably hasn't improved enough to compete for the Minnesota Twins, although they'll have a new manager in Paul Molitor. Here's Javier Betancourt. A pie, one ball, no strikes. Betancourt up from the minor league camp. We know that because he's wearing a duplicate number and he's wearing the double flaps on the helmet. A la Shane Victorino. Sinsu Chu wears one. Mm -hmm. Brian Pena wears one. Oh, yeah, Brian Pena. Yes. I can't think of anyone else. Didn't Otis Nixon wear one? He did. But he was also a switch hitter, right. so. I will say that American League Central is the easiest traveling division. This is coming from a guy who played in Seattle. <laughs> the end of the world. Foul ball. It's two balls and two strikes. The Mariners this year make four trips uh, to the Eastern Time Zone during the course of the season. 
That was always the hardest going from left to right. I think our shortest flight was to Oakland. That was still like two and a half hours. Yeah, so there was no taking the train or the bus like the Phillies do from time to time. A little high heat, and there are two outs. First strikeout for Kenny Giles today. The ball just exploded up in the zone. High level, it always looks so good. You can see that ball was in the glove. Well, here's Jason Kurzan. Struck out his last time up. Two strikes. Off the hands to center field. So Kenny Giles will work around the leadoff walk and pitch a scoreless ninth inning. Last chance for the Phillies when we come back. Well, back here in spring training 2015, the Phillies trail the Tigers six to nothing as we go to the bottom of the ninth inning here at Bright House Field. Yep, it's been that kind of day for the Phillies offensively. Boy, he's going to be crisp, but he's all woken up later on. <laughs> Somebody put some sunblock on him. Frenchie's Tiki Bar still crowded uh, at this point in the game, will be after the game. For a couple hours, a little entertainment. If you ever come down here to Clearwater, so make sure you carve out a chance to go to Frenchie's Tiki Bar, but also carve out some time after the ball game. Remains open for a couple hours after each and every game. Brian Bogusevic will lead it off. And the new pitcher for the Tigers will be left hander Joe Mantiply. Last year in the minor leagues, he had a 2.52 ERA. And to fly is out of Virginia Tech, 24 year old left hander. Was a relief pitcher last season in the minor leagues. He actually had 14 decisions as a relief pitcher, eight saves, six wins. In 38 games. Swing and a miss. He's got a little funk to him as he's coming to the plate. Sure does. A little crossfire action. Only threw three pitches and got the first out of the ninth inning. One away now for McGinnis, up for the first time. First 
Eight strikeouts today for Tigers pitching. A tough breaking ball right there. <laughs> that was really tough breaking pitch. Oh baby. McGinnis is able to slap it right through the middle of base hit. McGinnis wasn't waiting around for that breaking ball. Nope. I guess that's the, the thought process where you have somebody like a Deepman who's so tough and you know Matt talked about this the other day and the way this kid throws if you do get something early you're probably going to get a fastball so you're going to try to go after it and not get into that strikeout count. And you don't know these guys. So if you do see something that's straight mm -hmm. you can barrel it. Take a good pass at it. One ball no strikes to rough. Down and away two and up. Towards center and playable for Bernard. And he makes the catch. Ruff is done after four at bats today. Two outs in the ninth inning. And the Phillies down to their final out. Aaron Altair will be the hitter. I don't know what kind of offensive player Aaron Altair is going to be, but he is a very gifted defender out in the outfield. He gets, I think, out of everybody, the best jump on fly balls that we've seen in camp so far. And they're the baseball instincts. You hear me talk about yeah. that a lot. Your baseball IQ. I think one of my favorites to watch were, was Doug Glanville, the way he would go back yeah. on balls and the way he would read balls off the bat. Altair has a little of that in him. That one's to center field. Bernard again busy to, in this ninth inning, and he finishes things off with a grab out of the air in the ninth inning and the game come to a close. So the Tigers bang three home runs here this afternoon as they shut the fills out six to nothing here at Bright House Fields. So six runs on 11 hits for the Tigers. No runs on five hits for the fills. We'll wrap it up right after this. When you see